a break for a couple of minutes and we're back to continue this discussion. Hello, in part two we'll look at the uh, internal dynamic of Islam. I'll start again with you, Hamza. You said that Islam was hijacked on September the 11th on that plane as an innocent victim. So do you think it's a mistake to associate this attack with Islam? I, I think that what, what, what I really meant by that is what, what happens when religion is used in the West uh, for extremist uh, purposes. For instance, uh, even in Japan with the Buddhist uh, sect that use sarin gas, I think nobody in the West, because there's a general knowledge that Buddhism is a pacifist religion, nobody associated that with Buddhists. They just saw it as a freak incident. I think the same is true uh, in America. There are terrorist activities done by extremist Christians, uh, abortion clinics that are bombed, things like that. Nobody in the West associates those with Christianity because they know that generally Christianity uh, does not teach that. Whereas unfortunately, because there's such profoundly deep misconceptions about Islam, when, when these events do occur, people, many people in the West do in fact regard uh, these events to be somehow intrinsic to the Islamic uh, military. But there is an explanation for that, which is that you, you're right about the abortion clinic case, but if then the streets of Christian countries were filled with demonstrators, wheeled in placards saying, we support the person who organized this, he's our hero, he's our champion, bearing his face on placards, people would then think, oh, I see, there is some read across from the motives of these people to the wider Christian world. You'd begin to think there's a link. Equally, if those Christians who destroyed the abortion clinics were not denounced by uh, Christianity's leading clerics, who did not say, this is nothing to do with us, uh, who did not gather in some formal convocation to formally ostracize the perpetrators of that, then you'd begin to think maybe there's some link. And my f worry about the Islamic world is that, firstly, I know there have been absolutely individual senior clerics who have denounced September the 11th, but the fact that there has not been that formal move to gather in convocation, to, to gather collectively, to ostracize Osama bin Laden, say this is nothing to do uh, with what we're about. You've done it a bit in what you've written, but others, uh, it seems to me, have not done it in that collective way. Inevitably, people are going to think, and most importantly, the millions of people who seem to be supporting it across the Muslim world for all the reasons we've been talking about. Those two things combine to make non-Muslims, non who admittedly know all too little about Islam, think maybe there's something Islamic about this rather than just a rogue one-off element. But I, I think the media just, I, I think the media has some responsibility here because the media puts a magnifying glass. If you look at Pakistan, uh, a, a rally of 15,000 people, we could get a rally of the National Front in this country uh, that would have some very extremist views. The same in America. I mean, we could get some very extremist views. If, if, if the media shed its light on, on those groups as somehow being a representative of, of uh, the West, I think people would be horrified in the West. Uh, I, I really think the overwhelming majority of Muslims were as horrified as anybody else and in some ways more so because their religion was associated with this. So I, I don't, I can't agree with well, you. I just think Jonathan, come back. It's just the, the, the thing, that, and again I say it is not as a, as a, more in sorrow than anger. I mean it is something that worries me because there is that polling, for example, in Pakistan. I, I too wanted to believe the TV cameras have gone for the handful of people and, and magnified it. But there's polling that shows 80 plus percent support for Osama bin Laden. Not actually, you're right, for the specific action of September the 11th. They don't, I, I would say first of all that most people in the non-Arab world, they don't understand that he speaks in Arabic they don't know really what he's saying they see him he, he's he's a very romantic character he's wearing the traditional uh, garb of righteousness and piety they see him as a, a man who gave up 300 million dollars to live in a cave to sacrifice uh, for righteous cause he was seen as a freedom fighter by the Reagan administration back in in the 80s mm -hmm. and he was a hero in Saudi Arabia uh, for doing what he did in repelling the evil empire from Afghanistan so I think that it's people f have a hard time dealing with the fact that somebody could uh, could go down the wrong path what about that formal denunciation though that kind of I think there has been I really do and I think that that it's unfair to say that, that there hasn't been there has been a formal denunciation I think unfortunately there is elements within the Muslim world not, I'll give you an example, a Saudi Arabian friend of mine said that uh, he was asked by somebody, what was the initial reaction? And he said the initial reaction was in a sense, uh, some people had this initial reaction of 
you know, yes, this is a good thing. And he said, but when the contorted faces of the victims came, they suddenly, it came home to them. It wasn't a video game. It wasn't a film. It was something very profoundly horrifying. And I think that they were shocked. So there is, unfortunately, in the Muslim world, there is a sense that, that they are at the brunt of, of misguided foreign policies. There is a lot of aggression towards America. I'm not going to deny that. I think theologically it's quite clear that um, anyone that tries to use Islam to commit terrorist acts is entering the, the field of heresy. The Quranic injunctions against uh, the Quranic injunctions in, uh, for the conduct of any sort of aggression or war are very, very clear. There must never be any non-combatants killed. War must be declared. Women and children must be protected. And this is, I mean, is far, far more clearly expressed in the Quran than it ever is in either the Jewish or the Christian scriptures. And so to try and use Islam as a, uh, uh, and the Quran as a, uh, as a uh, legitim uh, legitimizer of terrorist acts is simply heresy. I mean, Hamza knows this better than I do. Uh, absolutely. But I think you're missing Someone. the point here. I don't think the issue is theological. The issue is political. And all of us, this debate is predicating on the notion that we know what terrorism is. Most Muslims would actually argue the first point, well, what actually constitutes terrorism? Is terrorism simply a euphemism for what the United States or its allies do not like, uh, political violence they do not like? Or is it actually something more substantive? And that's the first argument. Yeah. That whenever you actually put this point to them, the first thing they come up with is a series of, well, what about? Um, the half a million people die who are dying in Iraq because of the sanctions regimes. The fact there's daily bombing in Iraq. What about all the Palestine? What about Kashmir? I mean, you could go through this kind of very kind of long list. So the question is this: Is this about terrorism? Then what is the definition of terrorism? And this is where I think we really reach a point here: Is there actually agreed definition of terrorism which transcends simply the United States and its allies? And these allies also include the governments and the senior ulama to some extent. That's why you don't get. Uh, these kind of um, idea of holding a convocation where everyone will come together and denounce it. It won't make any difference because I disagree. Muslim people are not stupid necessarily. In a sense, they don't, they realize that these governments speak for themselves or they are actually, many of these governments are heavily implicated. And just because a fatwa is issued by somebody, it doesn't necessarily speak to that experience. Now the people in Pakistan who are protesting, they know that two years ago when Musharraf came to power, both um, Tony, um, Tony Blair and Bill Clinton were demanding return to democracy. But they now think that it's very unlikely that Tony Blair or George Bush are asking Musharraf to have a democratic election right now at this moment. Now that's not stupidity it seems to me. I think it's quite clear why they know that. And I think we tend to overestimate this kind of because you know they, these people don't have the kind of uh, privileges of the education of the first world etc. that these people don't know anything. They actually do know it because they live at the sharp end of it. I understand all that and I think you can hold simultaneously in your head an awareness of the uh, suffering at the hands of America American foreign policy, etc., of the vast swathes of the Muslim world, and believe that it's a pretty clear case of terrorism when a building with 6,000 people in it gets uh, hit with a view to everyone in it dying. And what I was supposed, in a way, I was looking for was if there was somebody who had done that or ordered that in the name of Judaism, my guess is that the Jewish world would gather to denounce that person for the reason Hamza says, which is don't steal our religion and, and abuse it in this way. Uh, Similarly, I would hope in the Christian world there'd be Barak a similar Goldstein, reaction. Barak Goldstein is considered a hero among yeah, some yeah. extremists. Against some, uh, uh, absolutely, among some extremists. But, the, uh, but formally by the rest of the rabbinic establishment, he's been denounced. But every and that's, well, that's what I'm and saying about the Muslim Muslims. countries condemn these bombings. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Iraq, I mean, it's only extreme. Well, well, you use the word the fatwa. Why, for example, can there not be a fatwa against Osama bin Laden? Would that no, not there say there has been. been hundreds of no, there have been hundreds of fatwas. Fatwa. A, a formal fatwa against Ab Osama oh, bin Laden. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Yusuf al Qaradawi, who is one of the most uh, respected amongst, uh, particularly the younger people, uh, came out. Uh, many of the scholars have denounced. Absolutely, uh, Al Azhar, which is considered very representative of of the, the uh, scholastic tradition in Islam came out with uh, complete condemnation, fatwas. Nobody has justified this theologically. I think, unfortunately, there has been emotional justification for it, w which shouldn't be seen as uh, intellectual or theological. But I think the important point to remember here is this, that when we're dealing with world politics, the exercise of great power isn't just the ability to use um, 
force. It's actually to make that force look just and legitimate. And that is one of the kind of questions that you know, the United States keeps running into. This war against terrorism, the first victims of the events after the 11th of September were Muslims or Sikhs who were considered to look like Muslims. Yeah. So when, for example, you have a war against terrorism and Muslim cemeteries are desecrated, again, you don't why is this the case? Are you looking for terrorists in cemeteries? No. So obviously there's a connection that is made implicitly, which everyone understands, even though there's a war against terrorism.